growing up, I, I never went to a masjid. And my school had no Muslims. So mm. it was like, I was the odd man out, right? <laughs> and growing up, I was in what they call the barrio, you know, like the, the hood, the, the mm. ghetto, the worst part of San Diego, you know, highest crime rates and murder rates. And my family is Muslim, alhamdulillah. But growing up, if you ask me, what does the word hadith meant? I would have no idea, right? If somebody told me what is sunnah, I would have no idea what that word means. So I was that basic in my Islamic knowledge. You study Islam, you teach Islam, you, you convey Islam, you know, uh, in California and San Diego. Mm. And uh, I think it's very easy for a lot of people to look at you and say, well, he was always like that. He must have <laughs> had, you know, a scholar of, uh, of, of parents and so on and so forth and come from a super righteous lineage, Allah Mubarak. And that's why he's like this. And I could never be like that. But was it like that for you growing up? Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything in every situation. But the reality is, uh, I wish, you know, that I grew up in a household where my father was a sheikh or grandfather and brought that tradition of knowledge, but that wasn't the case. Um, the reality is my family growing up was very secular. Growing up, I, I never went to a masjid. I mean, when I was younger, uh, I, I left, I mean, I was born in Pakistan, but I left when I was a very little kid. I lived in the UK a little bit. So I mean, by the time I got to the US, I was like eight, nine years old. So from my elementary school education onwards, all in the US. And my school had no Muslims. So mm -hmm. It was like I was the odd man out, right? <laughs> and growing up, I was in what they call the barrio, you know, like the, the hood, the, the mm. ghetto, the worst part of San Diego, you know, highest crime rates and murder rates. And, and my parents being immigrants, they didn't really understand that. And a lot of people watching, they go through that, right? Even from non-Muslim backgrounds that like, for example, we have a lot of immigrants from South America, Central America, from Mexico, they come to the US. And when they get to the US or Canada, they think, okay, we made it. Like, you know, now we're going to live like land of, honey and something, I don't know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Streets paved with gold and, you know, people are just going to be here. Do you want to be a doctor? Here's a degree, you know? <laughs> um, and, and reality is not like that. Reality is that every place has a hood. Every every city's got a ghetto, you know? When I went to school, it was my, my, my elementary school, my middle school, and the many high schools I went to were all uh, racially divided as well. Wow. So, I mean, I don't know about Canada, but in the US, uh, or at least in Southern California, and especially in the 80s and 90s, mm. it was very tense. So there was like Mexicans or, you know, and if you were like Salvadorian, Guatemalan, whatever, you were you were with the, with the Raza, mm. you know, so. Wow. And then there was the white guys, which were very small minority that was picked on in, in our schools. And then there was the African-Americans or the black guys. So when I went to school, I mean, I was too dark to hang out with the white guys and too light to hang out with the black guys. So I went Mexican. You know? <laughs> so for a good part of my childhood, I was raised with, you know, majority Mexican friends. And all of them were either Christian or Catholic. I had no Islamic, I mean, like I, I called myself a Muslim, like I'm not saying that I wasn't, right? Yeah. But I had no knowledge of Islam. So I didn't go to a masjid. I didn't have any Muslim friends. In fact, my middle school, uh, my high school, barely any Muslims, I was the only one. And then all my friends' parents, being Christians and Catholics, would send us to Bible studies and to churches so that it would fix us. Wow, you know? including you? Me, yeah, yeah. I wow. grew up, you know, when pe people see me quoting the Bible, they think as if I studied it to debate, <laughs> but I didn't. Wow. The reality is the Bible that I have, all those marks that I have, I mean, of course I'm still marking and I'm still a student and I'm still learning, but most of that, the contradictions that I point out were not marked up for debate. Mm. They were marked up when I was studying the Bible during Bible studies classes as wow. a teenager, trying to see if it's the truth. I was open-minded, like I'm not, you know, like I said, my family is Muslim, alhamdulillah. But growing up, if you ask me, what does the word hadith meant? I would have no idea, right? If somebody told me what is sunnah, I would have no idea what that word means. So I was that basic in my Islamic knowledge. So when I went to Bible studies, uh, I studied the Bible, you know, with Christians and Catholics and different churches, much more than I had any idea of the Quran. But what would happen is that I would get the Bible and I would be reading it and all these gang members sitting in a youth, you know, pastor program and, and the youth pastor would try to be, you know, try to be cool with us. And that was the worst thing because if you're not cool, don't, don't fake it. You know, it's really annoying when they'd be like, yeah. hey, homie. And you're like, oh, yeah, just stop, man. Right. And then they, they'd read a verse and I'd be like reading behind it in front of it. And, and I'd be like, excuse me, pastor. These numbers don't match. You know, earlier we read, you know, he was 22 and here it says 42. Yeah. And they'd be like, 
just just believe you know don't ask it's wow. a mystery mm. shut up and and go with it and, and that that really annoys me like i hate that answer just yeah. believe like as muslims we never do that yeah you know like ask questions we're good you know like alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulullah this is your brother othman ibn farooq uh, asking everybody to support the brothers and the great initiative they're doing we got to stop complaining about not having a voice and then raise our voice. We all know that, but these brothers are stepping up at a professional level, at a high level, with many great ideas for future planning. So we want all of you to support the good work they're doing and be a part of the solution. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We may not be able to conceptualize yeah. as human beings we're limited in knowledge, right? Yeah. I'm not saying we know everything. But in Islam, we're encouraged to learn, right? Encouraged yeah. to seek knowledge, encouraged to ask questions and use ulul uh, al-bab, yani the Quran talks about those that use their intelligence, yeah. you know? But in the church, it was always like, just shut up and believe, you know? Yeah. And then that didn't sit well with me. So I would, I would read through it and then I would mark these up, you know? And I'd, I'd come back and be like, pastor, look, you know, this, this, this has a contradiction. <laughs> he probably you know? hated you. <laughs> they, they, they kicked me out. Wow. <laughs> oh, I, I've been kicked out of so many churches. It's not even funny, it's you know? Not a lot. I used to go to this church. All my friends that were from Christian and Catholic households mm -hmm. didn't take it serious. So we'd be there and they'd be trying to talk to girls or, you know, smoke weed, which was illegal at the time, <laughs> um, you know, or whatever. And we were, you know, we were teenagers, 14, 15, you know, and I would be sitting there going, wait, wait, wait. So you're saying, this was an actual thing, right? You're saying that you can't go to heaven without Jesus. They're like, yeah, Jesus is like the stamp on the letter. It was always like little slogans yeah. or little, you know, like little like sales tactics. Yeah. I, well, it was never any depth to it, right? Yeah. But like, it's like the stamp on the letter. You can post it, but it won't go anywhere. Yeah. What about the time people before Jesus? Well, they believed in the word. Like, oh, what word? <laughs> like, hi, hello, like, what's the word, you know? And, <laughs> And they would, they would just get mad then, right? Yeah. Like, 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 no, just, just shut up and believe, you know, just, just Jesus died for your sins. Like, well, that doesn't make sense. Like, you know, like, I, I'm, like, I remember this conversation with multiple pastors and mm. every one of them kicked me out. Wow. Just were like, get out. Don't come back. I'd be like, those dudes selling weed in the church, you're not kicking them out. You're not kicking me out for asking questions, you know? <laughs> that, so, that's very telling. That's yeah. Very telling. So being from the barrio, from the gang life, I went to the church and I was like, hey, let, let me try to put this in terms I understand. So let's say I go into a store and I steal a piece of candy, mm. like Adam eating from the tree that he shouldn't have, according to Christians, whatever, you know, apple or whatever, right? Okay, and then I feel bad, like I did something wrong, Adam repenting, right? And I go back to the store owner, the owner of the store, mm -hmm. God in this scenario, and say, okay, you know, here's the candy back, or here, I'm sorry, let me pay you, like, what can I do? And he'd say, no, 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 no you're going to go to jail and your kids are going to go to jail. You're sinful and all your prodigy will be born with sin. Wow. First thing, that doesn't make sense, yeah. right? Like if I do something wrong, I should be held accountable, not yeah. my kids. Sounds like North Korea. Right, <laughs> or worse. You know, I mean, like even North Korea, I don't think they take like your great, 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 great grandkids to yeah. jail, right? <laughs> you know, but in, in born with sin, that means the rest of humanity forever would take on a sin of something we didn't do, right? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. So it didn't make sense to me, right? And then the store owner says, okay, but if you don't want to go to jail and your kids don't want to go to jail and your great, great, great grandkids are not going to be held accountable, no problem. I have this great son who's perfect in every way, who is me. Again, that doesn't make sense either. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is my son, 4.0 student, straight A's, never did anything wrong, listens to his parents, eats his vegetables, just a perfect kid, right? You and your friends torture him, kill him, we're even. <laughs> How does that make any sense? <laughs> like, which court we believe as Muslims and I hope as Christians and Jews and other people who believe in God, yeah. all believe God is just yeah. and God is loving and God is merciful. But at least we can say he's just, right? Rami, imagine you walk into a court, right? And the, and the judge is like, all these rapists and criminals and murderers that are sitting here, they don't have to pay for their crime. All of that's going to be put on the judge's son who was a perfect kid, never did anything wrong. We're going to torture and kill him. And all you guys, you're free. Salvation. He's dying for your sin, you know? Like, so that made no sense to me, right? So they kicked me out, right? Pastor was like, get out. You know, it's a mystery. You know? yeah. That's always the answer, right? You know, when, when the Christians don't have an answer, it's always, it's a mystery. Yeah. Okay. You don't have the Holy Ghost, so you can't understand it. Okay, so I guess I'm not going to understand it. Very convenient. Yeah, very, yeah, very right? convenient. <laughs> so, so growing up, be a part of the Dawah team. Like, subscribe, share, comment. You got to do your part for the Dawah.